and APB, American Protection Bureau, voted number one best on Long Island for all your security needs. Call 631-390-9050. That's 631-390-9050. APB. Big deal. Oh man! Listen, yeah. so I know you didn't haven't talk, spoken to him, but maybe you have on this particular issue. But no, nope. guy had a rough deal. Um, he lost his sister. Mm -hmm. He lost his brother-in-law. Any thoughts on that? Did yeah, he share that anything guy, with you on that. A he 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 talked about uh, his sister like like shit all the time. I mean, Jamie's like that man. He's been he him and Bill hadn't talked in years until you know. Uh, uh, Bobby and his sister lived in Jamie's mother's house. Okay. So when that all went down, Jamie thought he was getting all the money from that house. And, and, and this is coming from Jamie. So you don't know yeah, how exactly. much of this is, is a shoot or not, but he told me that when his mother died, right like before she died, that him and her went and got some kind of something together where it was all going to him. But then the bills, people that are handling him now uh something where it all went to bill and i think basically just recently when when it was settled or whatever uh i think out of kindness they fucking gave jamie some money out of it because uh, he did get some money out of it but he didn't get all of it but i think just out of, i don't think they had to i think out of kindness they gave him a, a substantial amount of money for that house so I know that he's bought a motorcycle. This motherfucker went and bought a flamethrower. He, he, he sent me a fucking a video. Did you see it? No. no didn't he see fucking it. is out in his yard. It's I, I don't know if it's on Facebook. He sent it to me personally, I think. I don't remember. It may be on there. But anyway, uh, he sends me a video. It's at night, and he's got this fucking backpack on, and I'm fucking shooting this fucking oh, flame no across the yard and the the biggest the funniest thing to me was in the background see he's got this uh shrine of himself and and myself mostly himself but i'm in most of the pictures you know right, what i mean right. but uh it's a it's a it's a storage unit basically uh and it's got it's the walls are covered you know all this shit and then on the <laughs> fucking outside of it, just like our gimmick, he's got spray painted like graffiti PG-13 on it in his backyard. And so when he's fucking blows that thing, you, it lights it up and everything. I said, oh my God, this he motherfucker. Lit the logo up on fire with the flamethrower? Yes. No, cool. he wasn't shooting it at the building. He was shooting it just when he shot it, like the building's over here. And when he yeah. shot it, it obviously light, oh, lights it up because it, yeah. it was nighttime. It fed me my whole life, but, but ever since I got out of it, I have... I have done 10 times more better in my life for, for myself and my family out of the wrestling business than I ever have in it. And that's because what comes with the wrestling business is, is stardom and fucking money and people and fucking uh, drugs. And then, 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 then it, it just goes away. And it, it, that's the bad part. Most people have a big drug addiction. And then when they're out of money, that's when crime starts. You know what I mean? It's just... There's no, there's no future for wrestlers if you don't save what you got right then. I mean, you break your neck, they fucking don't call you back. You know what I'm saying? That's fucking terrible, man. Sure. Well, you, uh, Jamie, what made you accept the booking when Eric Sims called you then? Because obviously you did accept it. Was it a moment of weakness? Was it, a, you know, did did you actually for a brief second say, you know what, it would be really nice to get PG-13 back together? Because i got to tell you, there was a lot of interest in I seeing did. you I guys together again. And you know, I, I and I, I first of all, I'm sorry. I myself didn't think nobody in New York would even give a fuck if I no show. Well, you know, it was my honeymoon. I was in the mountains with my wife. I could either get in the car, drive 14 more fucking hours to make $200 a fucking day, or I could stay in this hot tub with my wife in the mountains <laughs> on my 10 year anniversary. Oh, well, guess oh, what I fucking did? Yeah. Because <laughs> there's no, that. like I said, it, I don't know Eric Sims. I don't know that dude from fucking Adam. One time in my life, he flew me into Philadelphia, gave me a bunch of money. Me and Iron Sheet did a fucking video got drunk great to see the sheik and i've never spoke to either one of them again since then not that i wouldn't have 
but there was no reason for it because they didn't need there. You no, know, Sherry didn't need me or I didn't need them. And that's all the rest of the business is. If they don't need you or you don't need them, why would you even talk to the motherfuckers? Mm. Hey, uh, Jamie, I want to go back to your sister and your brother-in-law. You, you had a rough go over. They lost, uh, you lost both of them within a couple of weeks. How was your relationship with them? Bobby, Bobby is the world to me. Bobby Eaton was uh, my hero. He was, uh, he was, uh, he was definitely my hero, you know. Wow, getting a little emotional here. Sorry. It's okay. But uh, yeah, it's okay. Bobby was Bobby was everything to me for real. Bobby was the reason I wanted to wrestle, not because of my dad, because of Bobby. Bobby, Bobby, Bobby was just such a kind. Sorry, guys. Whew. No, it's okay, uh, it's wow. All good. It caught me out of nowhere, man. Understood. Whew. Understood. Is Bobby a... was definitely a, a, a my hero, man. And it's hard to lose your heroes. Bro. Sorry, guys. No. All good. Do you feel that? But, um, I mean, you know, uh, he, he was really, he was really everything. Bobby was just so kind and just such a good dude, man. And once again, when they, the wrestling business threw him away when they were done with him, you know, it's just, hmm. it's fucking terrible, man. Tracy's mother, you know, it, 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 they just threw him away when they were done with him, you know. Hmm. It's just a fucking terrible thing, bro. It's just, it's just so sad. It's just. No, no feature in the wrestling business, bro. I, I mean that. Uh, you may make a bunch of money one time, but there ain't the fucking ten guys I can mention out of two or three hundred that I know that that, that that have anything when it's over. You know what I mean, man? It's just I don't know. It's just such a uh, just such a fucking uh, dog eat dog fucking world. When people die in the wrestling business, the young wrestlers don't fucking mourn. They get excited because the spot opened up. You know what I mean, man? It's it, it's just terrible, man. I just hate it. But uh. uh I tell you what I do love is uh, the fact that that, that that somebody in New York even cared. You know, man, I'm sorry and I apologize. And if, if people bought pictures or whatever, I'd be more than happy to sign them, put them in an envelope. I'll give you my address, send them to me. I'll sign them and send them back. Because honestly, I really didn't think nobody would give a flying fuck in New York. Nobody knows me in New York. You know what I mean? I was raised in the South. I wrestled in these same fucking buildings my whole life. My daddy did. My whole entire family did, you know. And uh, so, to me, I, the South is where I, uh, I think, you know, I didn't I didn't think nobody would really fucking care. I really didn't. And right. it seems like I got so much more publicity by no showing than I would have ever got for going there. So, in a mm. sense, maybe maybe it was better. But I, I don't want to be in the rest of the business. And well, if Wolfie's whole deal was to put us together and go around and do these conventions, well, I wasn't going to do that either. And you know what I mean? And I just, I just, I don't know. I don't know what has, has I came to realization that, I didn't want to end up hanging myself in a fucking jail cell or dying in a goddamn hotel or, you know, with nobody around, nobody caring. So I just, I had to get away from it, man. And it's just such a bad thing, man. And I'm sorry. And for those people that, that came to, to see me, I'm flattered. And uh, I'd be more than happy to take care of it. Sign right. pictures, whatever I got to do, man. And I'm fine. I apologize to them. But to Eric Sims, I don't apologize to him. Fuck you, dude. I wasn't going to come up there and let you sell $40 pictures of me and keep the money. Eat a dick, motherfucker. That's what I say. I'm fucking so tired of these fucking bottom feeders that don't do a goddamn thing in my business, don't know nothing about my fucking business, and they get to keep all the money. No, not on, not on my dime no more, motherfuckers. 